welcome to Unleashed. And don't forget to join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. Here are the guys. In mid-January of 2017, I had an idea for a podcast and I talked to Brock about it and he thought it was a good idea. So we got Andrew and Rob involved. And I went to Cuba at the in, around that time, and I downloaded on my Kobo Shadows of the Empire. And I said, we should do an all Shadows of the Empire show. And we thought it would be a lot of fun. And Brock was like, yeah, I'll play the game. And so we decided this whole like elaborate show where Andrew, or Andrew Brock... Andrew, myself, and Rob would all sit and talk about it while Brock played the game and would chime in every once in a while. And I think it was fun um, because we all we all love Shadows of the Empire pretty much for the same thing. And Andrew and I, when we reread it, we saw a lot of similarities to events that occurred in The Force Awakens. Obviously, The Last Jedi had not come out at that point. Uh, no one knew who Snoke was, so we kind of decided that Prince Shizor in the book would become Snoke. You'll hear about how we got to that in a little bit. Um, and also there's a, a mind trick similarity thing between Ray and Luke in this as well. But the one cool thing with this video, and I got to bring it up, is, is we were, you know, we were doing this podcast and we had one or two people commenting on our videos. And we didn't do, we were doing a little bit of the clickbait videos early on. And then we, we none of us, none of our hearts were really into the clickbait stuff. We, so we decided to do the long form videos. Uh, and we would do them and then, you know, we saw our views drastically drop. Like right now with the bots, they drastically drop. Um, so we decided on the Shadows of the Empire one, Brock's just sitting, I'll never forget Brock just sitting in his chair playing this thing, pretty much separate from everything else that's going on. Um, and we put it up and it was our first video to ever pass, our first podcast video uh, to ever pass a thousand views. And it, it, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was you know, it was the first video of the four of us together. We did audio before. Or it wasn't the first video. It was the first real podcast that we did together. Before it was like a review and ranking and stuff. And this was the first time that we all kind of got together and just talked Star Wars and what we loved about Star Wars. And it was Shadows of the Empire. Uh, but anyway, I want to just kind of replay this one for you guys today right here. Uh, so here it is, episode 27. You know, we're on 162 tomorrow. And this is the 27th episode of the Rebels Come Podcast. So please take a look at uh, our Shadows of the Empire podcast. Hey everyone, well, it's me, Hello. James, and this is Brock, and you're about to watch episode 27 of the Rebel Scum Podcast. It's all about this bad boy, Shadows of the Empire, you can see right there on Legends. But before we start, uh, we wanted to just uh, say something. Over this the past weekend, uh, we crossed 1,000 subscribers. Wow. 1,000 of you subscribed to our channel, uh, hundreds and thousands of you watched our videos, uh, weekly uh, it's fantastic it means a lot to us we mm -hmm. just wanted to say thank you very much uh, we appreciate everything we appreciate the comments the good and the bad they're both <laughs> yeah and mom stop commenting that's not <laughs> nice it is uh but we appreciate everything uh thank you very much we look forward to doing this yeah. every week and now uh hope you enjoy our our podcast our video podcast on shadows of the empire by journey's own steve perry <laughs> <laughs> Not that Steve Perry. <laughs> Hello, scumbags, and welcome to another episode of the Rebel Scum Podcast. Now, before we get started, it looks a little weird. We don't know where Brock is. I'm okay. here. Where are you? I'm in the secret location. Brock is in a secret location. Yes. Uh, we'll cut to you in a second. Right there, now, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, there I am. Whoa. I am in a different location, not in the same room, slightly to the right. The, and oh, God! <laughs> anyway, uh, today, this week, we're joined along with Andrew Fantasia and Rob McDonald. And the reason that we're all here is we're getting together for a very special occasion. The occasion that Daryl, can you, Daryl, uh, once again, is directing this episode. He's behind the camera. Daryl, can you throw up camera Darryl three quick, uh, for us? Yeah, and just, yeah. Ooh. And what do we, oh, look at that. If, for those of you that can't figure that out, that is a. That is Shadows of the Empire for Nintendo 64. And um, we decided that uh, with the title of The Last Jedi coming out, uh, nothing to do with it, uh, we are we, we've, we're going to do an episode on, on Shadows of the Empire. It was a big, big deal back in 1996. I remember it very, very well, almost too well, I would say, yep. when it came out. Uh, but Brock will be playing. Yep. <laughs> we are live again. streaming this B. It is. Uh, he looks like he's having a great time. So <laughs> Arguably, probably the best non-canon thing. Like, I will go into depth about it. But, like, I remember when this game came out. This is my original 64. Can you hear me playing? 
That's, yeah. that's, <laughs> we I can see you right now. This is a hexagon nightmare. No, but anyways, <laughs> back to James. Brock, I will give you a, a large undisclosed amount of money if you can beat this game by the time the podcast ends. Uh, it's All the levels are unlocked, so does that mean I just have to play the last level? As long yeah. as I don't see you entering the cheat code, then yes, we're fine. Uh, Womp, Wampa Stompa is already <laughs> intro- introduced. All right, so we're all very excited about Nintendo 64's Shadows of the Empire. It was one of the uh, original Nintendo 64 yep. games came out, I believe, that uh, December. Oh, so anyway, yep. Nintendo, look at this. This is a Rob, Rob McDonald brought this. It's not Legends. That's how old this copy is. What year, what year did you, you got this in? I had, it it would have been 96 or 97. 97. One yeah, probably 97. I had the hardcover of it. Um, uh, an uncle of mine gave it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before we're going to get started on, on Shadows of the Empire, which I think we're all excited to actually talk about this, mm. because there, I'm telling you right now, there are things that uh, are pseudo canon in here, and I think they're going. I think more is going to be made <laughs> canon out of this thing. But before we get started, for the last uh, two weeks, Brock and I have been doing an underrated character segment on this show. Last week, yeah. uh, we settled on Bodie Rook and Admiral uh, yes, Piet, and the week before that was Dexter Jetster and and Admiral Akbar. Uh, there's always an admiral involved. Will there be one this week? We don't know. But um, Corday, we're coming for you. I promise you. At some point, Corday will make the Represent. list. <laughs> so, died in vain, James. So, uh, so what's gonna happen is, in, in the end of a couple of weeks, we're gonna have Brock and I will have 15 characters that we believe are underrated in the Star Wars universe, and we will bring it to people at Star Wars Celebration and talk about it. Um, so this week, Brock has chosen two. I have chosen two. Andrew Fantasia has chosen one, and Robert E. McDonald has chosen one as well. <laughs> and at the end of this, we're going to have three, three, three. Moving on. So, uh, Daryl, who's first on our uh, full page board extravaganza of underrated Star Wars characters? There oh, he is, everyone's shot. favorite, Wes Jansen. <gasps> Ooh la la. Uh, good shot, Jensen. Good thing I'm playing this level right now. <laughs> I was say, uh, James, if you found these clips, you found a very good shot of Jensen. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, good night, everyone. It, this is actually the only picture of Wes Jensen you can find online. Uh, Daryl, throw up Brock's uh, video playing for yeah. everyone. Oh, yeah. no. I'm, oh, uh, I just lost it. He you lost the because table. too much pressure. Anyway, Daryl, come back to us, please. Uh, so, Wes Jensen. Uh, he uh, he shows up in in Hoth in the Empire Strikes Back, and he is mentioned in both both the Legends version. Where are, what camera am I on, Daryl? The Legends version. We're not even on camera. <laughs> it's the Legends version and the original version of Shadows of the Empire. Uh, Wes Jansen is he's an X-wing pilot. Uh, yeah. And and Luke says in in Shadows of the Empire that he. That he's always trustworthy and he's always a reliable, reliable guy. Andrew, your thoughts on Wes Jansen? Is he underrated or is he a little too rated? <laughs> uh, well, he's rated enough for this list. I'll tell you that. Yes. Right now. Um, what do we know about Jansen? He made a good shot, and that's it. The only person in history who has really <laughs> praised Wes Jansen was, you know, Luke and Wedge. So now we want to kind of give him the love he deserves. I think he's a good candidate. Uh, uh, Rob. Oh yeah, absolutely. Amongst like X-wing pilots, like you know, you can't make. He's not a bad choice at all. I mean, uh, maybe Porkins, but uh, <laughs> the thing, the thing, I guess what it is, is that in like the actual canon movies, he actually more known more as a, a snow speeder pilot than anything. Not yeah. even a pilot. He just, he was the gunner. Well, so, in Shadows of the I mean, Empire, he's Shadows of the deal. Empire, he does actually get to fly. So that is good for him. There. <laughs> Brock, how, how do you feel playing as Wes Jansen right now? It's it's great. Uh, I just took I've out seen... an ATT, ATT, AT&T, Verizon, AT&T. Oh, yeah. I think, AT&T. I think you're actually Dash Rendar in this level. Uh, yeah, I think because he fought in Hoth. You're never yeah. Dash Rendar, right? yeah, well, because like my... Luke is talking to you, <laughs> yeah, even though you're doing Unless things you're that Luke does. You're somebody Whoa. else. <laughs> All right, uh, Daryl, can we get the next full page going? Let's see who uh, chose the next one. I have no idea who it is. I don't know who you guys. <laughs> I don't know who you guys chose, even though I put these graphics uh, no. together. Uh, down, down, down. There you go, right there. Ooh, Next, it it's a big one. Oh, let's transition this one to Brock. Boom, pick. boom, boom, IG, boom. IG, uh, eight eight. IG eighty eight. IG eighty eight. Brock, why did you choose? Um, IG88? Well, I've already said that most of the bounty hunters are going to be in this list. <laughs> and looking at the stuff I have coming up, all of the bounty hunters are going to be in this list. So IG eighty eight, I chose for this one specifically because he's in Shadow of the Empire, the, the novelization, and in this video game that I'm playing currently. And he's impossible in this video. Yeah, game. I think it's <laughs> it's a fun character because they make him like in the expanded universe, they really made him like a lethal like character, and sort of 
not I don't know if you're important to write. Yes, I took out the AT&T. <laughs> um, uh, but also like he's got, it's it's funny because in if you know the backstory of how they design IGA, he's literally just a water vaporizer or a water moisture a moisture vaporizer from Tatooine. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool though if there was an uh, a new canon story where you find out? That IG88 actually is that. And oh, somebody that'd be repur- and Anakin repurposed them oh my into God. a bounty hunter. This could happen. Rob, you don't really like IG88, so I'm going to go over to Andrew. Just to- <laughs> no, Rob, tell me about IG88. Uh, I love IG88. He's actually on my shirt right here. Oh, you probably what? can't see him, but he's uh, right oh, right you right. got that one. That one's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I I love IG88. I think he's in terms of bounty hunters for me. He's the most underrated bounty hunter amongst Ooh. them all. Ooh. Um, because I mean. We talk about Battlefront all the time, James. And you got Dengar represented. You got Bosk represented. You got Boba Fett represented. No IG88. I I you meant you. You miss Greedo. Greedo. I miss Greedo. Greedo's Excuse fantastic. Me. Yeah. You well, uh, Greedo, Greedo missed too. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I yeah I love IG88. He's he's just a cool bounty hunter. I mean, uh, you, we were talking about him in the in the game. He's probably the lo- loudest walker out of all uh, all characters <laughs> yeah. in the entire yeah, thing. Definitely. You could hear him coming from a mile away. But uh, yeah, I love AG88. He's he's really cool. He's really lethal. Like how uh, Brock said in the expanding universe. Yeah. I hope that they expand on that a little bit more, like in something, whether he shows up on Rebels or something. Like I that. don't think he is in Clone Wars, but I feel like there's oh shit, there is an actual <laughs> like uh, <laughs> droid like him at some point. Yeah, part of like the group when uh, like uh, Sasaj Ventress and like yeah, some of the other yeah, ones. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. It's just like, they did those episodes. It's just it's funny yeah. how like he's just basically pipes, but he's menacing in some way. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So Andrew, that's it. Andrew, tell me why he, you don't like IG88. <laughs> when you said that Anakin built him, I'm just picturing this deleted scene where it's like Yippee! CC3PO. He's a protocol droid. Help him <laughs> off. And then I'm building this thing to kill Waddle. <laughs> <laughs> and considering oh. how thin, considering how thin IG88 is, I don't know what he looks like underneath, like his armor or semi armor. Oh, <laughs> oh <anyway>. jeez. <laughs> Well, we will I'm too excited about IG. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we find out a lot about him in this game, and he's a mean mofo. Um, but I think he's he's one of those things where it's like he looks cool enough to be an action figure, but I don't yeah. know if I'd want to buy it because it feels like it would fall. This over is a easily. this is a pretty badass picture right yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, mostly he just stands behind Boba Fett, right? Yeah, like, yeah. He just stands behind. All right, Joe, can we get the next uh, full page up? And find out who... I don't even know whose pick this is. I'm hoping that it's... Uh, yeah, it is. It's the one that I was hoping. This one was chosen... Oh. oh, no, wait. This is not what I thought. Um, yeah, well, this is a great one anyway. This is Rob McDonald's pick. Rob, tell me about Dash Rendar. Well, I mean, I, I couldn't think of a more, more poet, poetic character to talk about uh, in terms of an <laughs> underrated character uh, in this episode, and that is uh, this character right here, Dash Rendar, right nice. there. Um, you know... He's uh, he's one that has been said by Pablo Hidalgo, like you, you mentioned it, James. He's sl- slated to never be uh, in canon. I would say right? never say never, but yeah. Yeah, ne- ne- never say never, absolutely. And that's what I'm even going to mention here. That uh, uh, I mean, he gets he gets flack for being kind of like a uh, Han Solo light. But in a way, like, you know, what we're going to talk about a little bit, to me, I even think that he he takes what Han Solo was in the first movie to another level. Like, he goes he goes even further, like, in terms of uh, he, you really have to pay to get his services. Like, stuff changes throughout this book. And again, we'll, we'll get to that later. But the cool thing about him is that he could literally be the opposite, like, the coin flip of, of what a Han Solo could be. So, you know, maybe not adapt as to everything that he's done in these books, in terms of it's very much like Han Solo, and in in a way change that and make him join the canon as a slightly different one. Maybe even make him not join the Rebels in some way, or, you know. Um, Anyway, those are all what-if questions, but regardless, to me, in this game, he was literally the badass character. Like, you play as him, and he's just like, whoa! Like, you know, he's doing all this stuff. He's got rockets on his little tiny gun. Crazy. All right, Brock, let me ask you something. Yeah. Who's a better pilot, Han Solo or Dash Rendar? Ooh, wee. Uh, camera's on. Well, you. I know I. I I'm, okay, wait. I'm wait. getting trying to get my camera time as much as I can on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All um, you doing is playing this game. Well, I mean, it's we could easily say it's graphics. hard to answer that because Dash Rendar is basically just a amalgam of Han Solo. Well, that's not the right word. But then I to 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 make it simple, I'd be like, who, who, 
who flew the the um what's the thing? Outrider? No, no. Like the thingy with the twelve parsecs. Kesselrun? Kesselrun, Kesselrun thank yeah. you, sorry. It's hard to do two things. I would, lo- I would love. Uh, if so there you the- go. Han did it, and Han wins. But we don't know if Han did it. He, the oh, ship yes. did it. I would like to. F- I would like to find out if Han Solo did the Kessel Run, or if it was Woody mm-hmm. Harrelson or oh, yeah. Orlando Glover. I would like yeah, to Glover. know. He hasn't think- read the script yet, by the way. <laughs> well, here's one of the really? interesting. Yeah, they started shooting yesterday. Yeah. The Solo Cup and uh, Han first shot was on the uh, the thing. What were you going to say, Rob? Uh, one of the interesting things I looked up was when I was looking on Wikipedia and I was looking at the Outrider, and then if you look up the Millennium Falcon as well, under the top speeds, it shows that, I forget what it was, what, what uh, wait, it said like, it was either 1150 uh, kilometers an hour or something like that was for the Outrider, and the and the actual uh, Millennium Falcon was 1050, so it was actually showing 100 kilometers, 100 miles faster as oh. the Outrider. So... It's, oh, it's claiming, but the, but the uh, outrider, that's claiming that the Outrider is faster than the Falcon. Yeah, well, uh, guess what? I'm going to yeah. go on Wikipedia. <laughs> and I'm, gonna write well, down. I'm, I'm just mentioning it, something that they have. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure Bosk wrote that entry in there. Bosk could have oh, been. Oh, he Quantum would. That's classic Bosk. Andrew, yes. why is Dash Render not as good, good as Colonel Mebus? I'll tell you exactly. Spoiler alert. For- oh. <laughs> I, I read this for the first time recently. I, for this. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. That shocked me. It, it, it shocked it, me, yeah. It shocked me too. After a while, <laughs> <laughs> I the biggest contribution Dash Rendar makes is his shoulder pads, and the second <laughs> biggest contribution he makes is that he gives Shadows of the Empire the book an emotional center that it doesn't have without him. Um, he's like, you know, everything else is just hey, Luke's having fun, Leia's doing this, Shizor's doing that, but Dash is kind of the guy where you you feel bad for him. He's got. The biggest arc in the book, and he's barely even in it. Many both inside. Many. Yeah, done. he's he's in it surprisingly less than you would think about judging from this game. Yeah, yeah. And and the, the toys that came out in that era, like Dash Render was a huge thing in '96, '97 for Star. I mean, look at this guy. Yeah, he's on solo. Watch out for that Wampa, bro. <laughs> oh, I Darryl, just took we, him out. Who do we got next? While well, Brock's taking out Wampas, who do we? What? Full page board in this one next. Uh, exactly. The next one, I believe, is uh, one that Andrew Fantasia chose, and this this one was this one actually um, was out of left field, and I think you did that on purpose. I think you did the left field on there purpose. There he is. Bring him up, Colonel Mieber Gascon, my boy. <laughs> now, does this have any <laughs> relevance to Shadow of the Empire? Or are you just putting it in there? Zero, Brock. Okay, cool. But, That's what I and sure. before anything, anyone says in the comments, Mark, he's not legends. We know the the show is just called Legends because yeah, we're talking good about because of we're, Andrew, by the because way. we're talking about <laughs> Shadows of the Empire. We're not talking about this Shadows of the Empire. We're talking about this Shadows of the Empire with the Legends, which banner. is Legends bit. Look at this; you can't even see it. It dissolved. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> are the backs of the book same? Leia got covered on mine because of the, the UPC code is in front of it. Oh yeah, look at Isn't that. Isn't that sad? You know, yeah. UPC. They had yeah, to make room for the movies. Disney logo on that one. <laughs> I like the back of. This one's actually a nicer cover. Mm-hmm. They went purple with the new one. And anyway, who cares? <laughs> uh, anyway, so talk about this guy because I think that you know the hardcore Star Wars fans are going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but for yeah. people that don't have any idea about the Clone Wars, because there are a lot of genuine Star Wars fans that do not watch the Clone Wars and that's or Rebels. I it's, mean, people you know, don't want to watch cartoons. That's just how it is. And yeah. th- I mean, they don't even watch the prequels. So tell me, <laughs> who is this guy and why is he underrated? Mieber Gascon. He's this little dude. He's this wow. alien. And he's a colonel <laughs> in the Clone Wars. That's it. He's just a colonel in the Clone Wars, and he's in this four-episode arc in Clone Wars. He's not even in the whole show. He's in four episodes, uh, where his the whole thing is just he goes off with R2 and a couple other droids, and they go on this mission together, and they end up saving a lot of people's lives. But the reason I picked him was because he was the character I underrated the most. He was the character I underestimated the most. The first time I ever saw those episodes of Clone Wars, I hated them. They were like my least favorite. I was like, really? We're going to spend four episodes with this guy just yelling at our two units? Like, seriously? And so I was rewatching the show lately, and I kept, you know, thinking in the back of my head, I'm going to have to sit through those four episodes again. They're coming. They're coming. And I got to the last season, and I got to those four episodes. And I watched them again. I'm just like, okay, whatever. Let me just plow through them, and then I can get to something that has Mace Windu in it. Whatever. <laughs> so I get to, I, these four. Four episodes start happening. Oh, Brock, what did you do? Uh, These four episodes start playing out in front of me. And this guy, Colonel Gascon, 
I don't know why, but he just gave me all the feels. My heart was just <laughs> melting for this little dude because his whole thing was he was this pompous, arrogant little guy who was just treating the arts units with disrespect. And you realize the reason he's like that is because he was turned down from being in the military by the Jedi because he was deemed too small. They literally did what Yoda said he should never do. They judged him by his size. They wouldn't let him go out into the field. So when the RT units are criticizing his his uh, directions as a leader, he kind of blurts out. He's like, look, this is my first time, okay? And they're like, oh my God, you're a colonel and this is your first time in the field? He's like, yeah, this is the first time they'd ever let me go out on a mission. And the more you get to meet this guy, you start to like chip away at him and you see his vulnerabilities like he's at a point where he's starving and as an italian man when i see a person who wants food <laughs> i can't help but feel for that person so he's like he's literally famished he's out, outside this restaurant he's like what am i gonna do i haven't eaten in weeks and he has to eat garbage out of a dumpster out back and i'm just like this poor little man and by the end of it he's like uh, this minor spoiler it just doesn't end up happening daryl daryl we're talking about colonel mebus colonel that's Mebus, right my boy yeah this doesn't end up happening, so it's a minor spoiler, but like they're they're stuck in a situation where battle droids are shooting at them, and it looks like it's the end, and the, the droids are like, you know, sir, come on, we gotta get on this ship, and he just looks at the droids, and he's like, save yourselves, and he just, <laughs> he's willing to give himself up. Luckily, he gets away, but I was at that moment, I was like, okay, dude, this guy needs to be on this list. Okay, um, Brock? Yeah. Colonel Mebus, does he deserve to be on this list? Uh, I think so. I didn't mind that story arc. Uh, and there's a lot of Clone Wars stuff that I'm like, no thank you. But like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can see why people wouldn't like it because, I mean, one of the R2s is pink and it's called QT. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, two on the nose. Um, it's cool. I think... Oh no! Oh oh oh, okay. oh God! I think what you <laughs> said though about how the Jedi judge the book by its cover talks what I said last week on the thing when I rewatched the uh, on VHS when I rewatched the shows, how it shows that the Jedi Council is actually not as pure as as they I don't even know as they think they are, but as they should be, mm-hmm. and it kind of gives you another layer of Anakin why you would see Anakin not totally believe in the Jedi ways. Absolutely. And they bring it up in the Obi-Wan and Anakin, Anakin comic, which you've read, right? Yes. They bring That's a huge part, and Anakin contemplates it. And then Obi-Wan's even like, well, maybe I won't be part of this either. Yeah, and that's before episode two, and Anakin's already like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know about this. Yeah, and I, th- I think that, I, I really, I have this feeling that that part of the <clears throat> arc is something that Lucas had, but he never really fulfilled on, on the screen. It never came across. But he knows... Like Filoni knows the Clone Wars people, like all those know, and I think Disney, Lucasfilm, the new regime, they know. I think, and then that's why they're throwing that in. Rob Mebus, yes or no? I mean, uh, in terms of underrated characters, I definitely think it fits under the banner for sure. I mean, like, uh, I'm sure you're not the only one that likes the character a lot. I mean, I've never even thought of him as like the dramatic type of character. I remember I watched the episodes, and I just there's a lot of those types of episodes that are purely comedy and that's what I thought it was at yeah. least on on first view, you know, viewing I was like okay you know the, the droids are comedy they're fun and Mebus was fun too because uh, he was just this you know like you said a really tiny character along with these droids and they're literally I think they're fighting off the battle droids or is that what it was or yeah, they're they, fighting off something else I they were trying that. to steal something and then they got shipwrecked and it was just like oh, one, yeah, the one shipwreck thing, yeah. problem after another yeah the shipwrecked one yeah I remember they were being shipwrecked and they fought off like creatures or something like yeah, that yeah they were they're on this planet that looks like purgatory. Like right. they're literally just in the middle <laughs> That's of That's right, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. Daryl, who's next? Suspense. Da, 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 da. Luke right. Skywalker is in the no. Yeah, who Gurry. is this? Purry. From <laughs> Gurry? Gurry. Is it Gurry or Hooli? <laughs> I think it's well, how'd they say it in the thing? It was Gurry. Yeah. Gurry, that's how I, I read it. Is a character in the book? Yeah. How, have you read the book? Yeah, when I was 12. <laughs> well, now you're not 12. <laughs> anyway, Gurry is a fantastic character. She is, uh, look, Daryl, throw it back up. She is uh, She's a, a robot mm-hmm. assassin. who they, they can't tell that she's a robot, though. Nobody knows that she's yeah. a robot. And, uh, and the Dark Prince has made love to her. Also, and she she can fulfill <laughs> his love. she can fulfill his needs, and he won't even know that she's a robot. So that's I pick I pick her because and she had um a, she had a prequel comic, was it a prequel comic she or did. a sequel comic? There's a comic about her that that they made was later it a on. Squeakquel? It was a squeakquel. <laughs> there is a comic about her Especially that came when out. She's or was done with her. Yeah, well, <laughs> he he was done with a lot of people. Uh, Rob, do you like the blondes? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, never like, tell me the blonde. <laughs> <laughs> she was I, I, so she has been in other stuff aside from Shadow of the Empire. She has she been. She had a comic. I don't she know. Had a, she was in a comic. Yeah, like, Mebus isn't was, anything other than uh, Clone Wars and Rash Dash Ra- Rash Rash for Dendar now. <laughs> Road Rash three D Rash Dendar. No, yeah, she's uh, she's a fine character. I mean, she's pretty much six. Uh, she, she's I keep saying six or that's how I call what I called it when I was a kid. But uh, she's or uh, right hand uh, woman. Like she was she's pretty much the one that uh, she, he relies on to like get stuff done for for him. Oh, so, yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, she she was she was a cool character. She was a fine character. She served, served, her, served her purpose. Did and she? I think, I think uh, she should serve more. <laughs> Andrew? Yeah, Guri was awesome. She was she was the Sunny Corleone to Shizor. She was like right. his muscles right hand. She would get shit done. She would crack skulls and she wouldn't even care about it. Um, the fight with her at the end and Luke was it was one of those moments where I'm like, God, I really wish this wasn't a book. I really wish I could see this happening right now. Because she was like the superhuman character fighting a Jedi. And we still really haven't gotten to see Luke really bust loose out on film yet. And I feel like this would have been that moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want I wouldn't mind seeing more of Guri. Because we it's implied she got away. Yeah. Well, it's, there's a comic. Yeah. Daryl <laughs> Daryl, I'm not gonna even talk to Brock because he didn't remember who it was. Who's next? No, I do know. <laughs> what do you have to say? It's Brock? like she's like the mercy. Uh, she's like if Zizor is Lex Luthor, she's like Mercy. You remember? Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, for Lex so, Luthor. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. She's All right. a sex bot. <laughs> Next down. <laughs> Fembot. She's the oh, original. There he is. She's speaking of Zizor. She's yeah. how, how do they say it in the? Zizor. Zizor. I'm, yeah. I'm going with Zizor. Running. Sounds with more. It sounds more cutting. Yeah. All right, Prince Zizor. Uh, he is the most handsome man in the galaxy, the leader of the Black Sun. <laughs> he is a criminal, but not a criminal, yeah. and he uh, wants to kill Luke Skywalker. Brock? Yeah, he's awesome. He's like Thrawn. Like, he was a cool character in the expanded universe. So, like, I mean, a gang- he's basically a gangster. He's he's basically Jabba, but he can walk around faster. Um, <laughs> and he speaks with Jabba. Yeah, yeah. And he's trying to, yeah. Like, it's... I was rereading, like... Uh, Wikipedia and what have you on like I was like oh yeah I remember that um but yeah he's cool he's like eccentric too so he's yeah, he's very much I'm really glad I thought up that example because he's basically Lex Luthor yeah. he's like I will kill you yeah he why bit, for, gain. for gain for <laughs> gain everybody's in agreement that Zizor is cool Zizor right? <laughs> is cool we're all in agreement Daryl who's he's next right. yeah. <laughs> Daryl's just watching Brock play yeah, the game is like. Boom. I was watching it too. Once he got this level, Brock. Boss fight. I'm Daryl's really literally, like, Daryl's literally like, I just want to play that game too. <laughs> nope, that's not it. Is that all of them? Uh, oh my god, we went through all of them. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, look at that. Um, so, so to narrow it all down, we have Colonel Mebus Sanders. <laughs> Mieber Gascon. Mieber, I enjoy it. Mieber, Mieber Gaston from that joke Be- up earlier, didn't you? Mieber Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, Part Two. <laughs> we have Dash Rendar, Prince Gizor, Scheiser. We have Scheiser, yes. Uh, Guri, Guri, West Jansen, and uh, who's the other one? Oh, IG88. Oh, IG88, yeah. obviously. Uh, so we'll go through. We're going to come up with three of them. Three of them are going to make it on to the next round. Well, look, Daryl's a huge fan of IG88 and Dash Rendar. Uh, <laughs> Rob, Rob, let's start with you. Give me uh, your three finalists. Three? Okay, I'm going to go. Oh, okay, Brock, I guess we're going to start <laughs> <Okay>. with you. <laughs> oh, you said Rob. <laughs> He's Sorry. so go, into go, the game. Go. You first, Brock. Okay, go for it. Number three, Dash Rendar, because this would be sweet to see on TV. <laughs> Even if they rewrote the whole thing, whatevs. Um, then Prince Zizor, and I'm gonna go Wes Jansen because I love Ooh. X-wing pilots. Ooh! All right, Rob, let's move over to <laughs> you. Sorry, Andrew. I'm not, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Damn you! Uh, are, are, are we ordering them here? Like, yeah, just do three. Just give okay. me three. Well, I'll just, I'll just say three. Uh, my three would, pro- would probably be. Uh, I'll go. I'll go with Dash Render as well. Uh, uh, Shizor and IG, of course. I gotta go with IG. Shizor, Andrew. Uh, in no order, I'll go Mieber Gascon, but he is. Oh. Um, I'll go Wes Jansen and I'll go Guri. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so the finalists this week are going to be Wes Jansen. Surprise. That surprised the hell out of me. When I picked him, I was like, this is a throwaway. Uh, Wes Jansen is going to move on. So you, uh, you, chose, you choose him as well? Uh, yeah. Oh. Who chose Who chose Shizor? I did. Uh, yeah, Shizor and Dash got two votes as well, I guess. Yeah, and those two are also going to move on. Okay. Cool. <laughs> 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 well, I just. Unbroken. Uh, sorry. 
<laughs> but in two weeks, Brock and he I ate can garbage. We James. Can, we he had to eat garbage from behind a restaurant. <laughs> All right, but in two weeks, Brock and I can revive somebody to come yes, back and do it. So that is uh, this one. So let's move on to the topic of the day, where Brock <laughs> Brock has been. Derek, you throw up on the little screen what Brock has been doing. It's been coming up. You've been seeing it yeah, down Brock, there. Brock, tell us what you're doing. Brock right is now. playing uh, saving the galaxy and He's not the destroying this ATS. You got to shoot its bum. I really no, I know. But like the the funny thing about this game, it's so old that like you. Don't have control of your aiming. Yeah, it decides where you're shooting. You shoot in that direction and wait for it. But because it's higher up, I have to get up there, and I think he's blown up all my boxes. I think there's a better way to do it. If you hold down, I think it's Z. Hold down Z, and then like there's a oh, there's a way to aim. Yeah, Yeah. I think it is Z. Yeah, hold down Z, and then you can tilt up with the stick and shoot him in the bump. Oh, Oh, look at that! Just Um, well, look at what he did. did. That is his weak spot, In the yeah. comment section, let me know if any of you have ever beaten this game or played this game. I would really be interested in knowing that. Okay, so let's let's move on. I want to talk about I want to talk about the Shadows of the Empire now. Ah. Uh, not just the game, but also the book. Look at this thing. This is the secrets. secrets. Where did you get this, Andrew? I found that in a used bookstore. It's the only used book when? I've ever bought in my life. About nine years ago, I want to say. Oh wow. Maybe ten. And you never read the book? I read about halfway through it, and what I found really funny about it was it talks about everything as if you've never heard of it before. It's like, it, it brings up the video game, and it's like, in a video game, you have to perform a series of objectives and then reach a boss monster and destroy the boss. Like, it talks <laughs> in the most, like, layman's terms possible. Um, but yeah, I want to read it now that I have, you know, absorbed this book, and now that I actually know what Shadows of the Empire is, I want to really dig into that and see what they have to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks That's like there's cool. some uh, concept art. Uh, Throw uh, that up, Daryl. Daryl, show Game everybody over. what happened. How Brock is a failure. Uh, uh, <laughs> too late, too late. So anyway, yeah, this looks like a very interesting book. I just pulled up a page and I lost it now, but it was, uh, hold on. Oh, I lost it. It said Dash Rendar, person most likely to have mom tattooed on his arm. <laughs> Really? There it is right there. This is what you want to see when you read this book. I don't know <laughs> if that's even visible or not, but there you go. That is interesting to me. Uh, and that looks nothing like Dash Rendar either. That's the what's even more that's interesting. That's like homeless Dash Rendar. Yeah, but the thing that's cool about this book, and you just read it, and Rob, when you've been listening to the audio of it, yeah. and Brock, you've never read a book in your life. Never. <laughs> These are all Brock's books. They're not even like anyway. Um, but the, the thing that's cool though is is Imperial books, Center, books, aka books, books, Coruscant. Books, books, books. And uh, this is before the prequels. It's before Coruscant was a thing on film, and they and they have that in there. And this book and the whole thing with this Legends book and this New York Times bestseller by Steve Perry. This one's just Steve Perry. And Luke it's not Perry. the Steve Perry from Journey, which really made me upset. Right? Oh. Don't stop believing. It might be. I thought it was. Uh, but anyway, so the thing that's cool, though, is is the, this was used to gauge the popularity of Star Wars, to see if they could do uh, the prequels, to see if George Lucas could do it. And it was called at the time a multimedia event because, if you're not aware, Brock is playing the game. And yeah. from the game, he is... As, playing as Dash Rendar from Dash Rendar's point of view. This book follows Dash Rendar's, but like Andrew said, he's not a main character, but he's in there. He's sprinkled in. Whereas you follow more Luke and Leia and Lando. And Lando's yeah, great in this book. I, I don't even know if Dash Rendar had a point of view chapter, did he? I don't think he did. No, no he shows uh, up. He's, but he does he's his, there, yeah. He does yeah. And then there was a comic book which focused heavily on Boba Fett, and then you saw uh, his perspective of what's going on. Uh, during all of this, and there's some other things that go on as well. That is so cool, and I did not know that about this until yeah. you told me. It, it's a, the I, coolest I, yeah, concept. I guess yeah. I'm, I'm reading, and I'm just like, so James, uh, when is Dash coming into the picture? And you're like, no, 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 idiot, this is how it works. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I was like, oh my god, that makes it so much better. And now I want to see them do this again. Yeah, I'm sure you can't let them talk to you. Yeah. Like <laughs> see, I'm the pretty sure I was. If they nice do this that. again, then will Jansen get oh. his own point of view? He damn well. Jansen. I think Jansen's got. You know, th- but this is the thing that Canon kind of. Uh, it might be too hard with Canon because then you have to worry about where everybody is. But this is free range, and this is you know when they announced that they were that Disney bought it and they were like all the books are are thrown in the trash. I'm like, fine, I don't care. That's fantastic, because, I mean, look, the Thrawn trilogy is great, but you have to. You have to tell a new story. Yeah. All I can hear is. <laughs> oh, you have to tell a new story. So it's like, okay, you don't want to tell stories that happen after Jedi because we already know what happens. But this, so then they're like, Clone Wars is it still exists. And you're like, that's fine. But this is the Clone Wars of the original trilogy. That's yeah, what this that's is. Exactly this is the Clone Wars. This is what we wanted to see. In this, And it's and it's actually 
rereading it now. I read it. I went to when I went to Cuba. I read fifty percent of it. Three hours <laughs> I read on the thing, and I was fifty percent done. My Cabo told me that. But the, the thing that, <laughs> but the, but it's an entertaining, enjoyable book, and you can argue that Dash Rendar is just Han Solo all you want. He's he is, but he, he's that character. You can argue that every bounty hunter is the same. Yeah. That every Sith Lord is the same. That every Jedi is the same. So. That that's how I feel. I think. Do you, Andrew? Do you think this should? Do you think there's a place for this in canon? Parts of it, yes. I think. Um, I mean, we know Black Sun is canon, which is the yeah, the, yeah the that's mafia right. That she's yeah, yeah. So that's canon. Mm-hmm. Um, his species is not though. Oh no, his species is. We yeah. see them in Clone Wars, so they could be. Um, I think that um, the concept of something happening between Empire and Jedi regarding the search for Boba Fett, the hunt for Han Solo, all that stuff. I think that's absolutely going to take place and they're definitely going to sprinkle something from this in, but just knowing how they've operated so far, I think it's going to be a little different and hopefully weave in some more connections to what exists now. So maybe more of something about like the Dameron family because they're kind of around yeah. and uh, you know, Kyber crystals because now they're more in the limelight. So I think they're gonna they're gonna mix and match and do what they've been doing so far and give us a little bit of both. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Does uh, Snap's mom survive out of uh, if anyone hasn't read Life Debt? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Does she survive Life Debt? She died like nine she times. Dies, in the first I know that was uh, the worst <laughs> thing ever. It's like I, every chapter and, and Nora Nora Wexley Nora. is like Nora died, and then Nora woke up. I think she's alive because she was like. Kinda, I feel like if you she kill her, hooked so up she, with Wedge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of little thing with Wedge going. Uh, so if she's, she's a cat. she could be Nine cool. Lives. She could be cool as I guess she'd be too young. She'd be cool as a new Dash Rendar. Yeah, she, that would have been around the time she left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. I think that actually she might make some. That'd be kind of a cool. Yeah. Because I guess I mean they've kind of alluded that Dash Rendar won't be because yeah they make fun of him a lot on Twitter and it's unfortunate. But uh, Rob, anything from this? Anything from this that you would like to see? Canonized? Is well, that a word? Canonized? Is that how you say it? It is, know. yeah. That's yeah the thing. Okay, good. The I mean, they could canonize the story, absolutely. Like, in some way. Outrider you know, they is canon, if, by the way. It's uh, in it, a new it hope. Is. Yeah, it's in a special. No, I know, I, I know it is, but they've also. I've, I've heard some people. Whatever. Like, Carillion like, Frey so, Freighter. I've heard some people from Lucasfilm just claim that it's just like, hey, that's that's the Carill- uh, just, that's that, the, that model and not necessarily the Outrider. But, okay, uh, well, guess what? Goes? I have just nicknamed it the Outrider. <laughs> All right, it's canon officially. <laughs> That's classic Outrider. Uh, anyway, uh, something that I was mentioning when I was talking about Dash specifically, like earlier, in terms of him just being kind of like, uh, in terms of the way it starts, and you're talking about his arc in, in the movie, Andrew, uh, the way it starts is he does something that Han Solo never did in any of the other ones, is that they pay him to do a job at the beginning, and he leaves them behind. He's just like, hey, screw yeah. it. You never, you never paid me to shoot. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of like a little bit more heartless even than Han. So that was the cool thing that I enjoyed about him and that different like character trait that it was like you know, and especially the 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 swing that he makes throughout the entire book to not caring and to completely caring about like everything and you know, seemingly giving his life. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the movie, at the end of the book, um, and of course. Uh, I, I I forget the the end the, the, in the book they actually specify that he does get away like he does in the uh, in the game right dash yeah he dies right he, I don't think they specify that he I, I I didn't remember if they did it or not too but uh, in the game they specify is yeah. that when when it's when it's when it's exploding he uh, he goes to uh, light speed so he fakes his own death um to oh, right. yeah, to, yeah, to get yeah, to yeah. get his uh, to get the price off his head, so the empire's not searching for him. Yeah, I like to think he gets blown up. Yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> He's got to pay for what he did to those Bothans. It's very open ended. Like, it it alludes to the fact that Guri got away. It well, there's a comic. That sh- I'm telling yeah, you right now, the, there's a comic. The, um, Brock, let's go. <laughs> what about it? We're going to the comic shop okay. in search of Boba Fett. Anyway, Even Shizor, like his thing bl- blows up. But before that, last time you see him, he's thinking like. Is this worth it? Should I stick around? And that's the last time you see him. So it's... He's dead. Yeah. Very vague. Book. I mean, he's not dead anymore yeah. because it's not canon. Mm. Yeah, even when you... Uh, like, uh, I was looking up his section in uh, Wikipedia as well, and the only thing that they mention after the fact is that there's some type of rumor in one book where it's, like, uh, thought to be that uh, Shizor was still alive at the end. But uh, Daryl, we've moved on to Shadows was, of the Empire. By the way, you can change the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> that Shizor still survived, but then it's like they, they mentioned they mention somebody here? else. 
Yeah. Oh, that's Gree. Yeah, right there. Yeah. The, yeah. The I know who she is, James. <laughs> <laughs> that that looks like and, a like a blood like smudge. And let's not forget Can one you throw character up the that video, gets Dave? barely anything oh, uh, in in the book and gets a whole lot Do more yeah, in in, uh, in the game. Uh, Dash Render's faithful companion, Lebo. Lebo, that's right. Yeah, good old Lebo. The uh, Chewbacca to Death Rider. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a closer yeah. look is, at her. Yeah. Is. Wow, that's She looks like uh, Seven of Nine from she lo- uh, No, Star she looks Trek like um, from Kill Bill, the main person. Oh, Uma Thurman? Uma Thurman. You know what it might I'm the been. best at names, you guys. <laughs> we should have a podcast. I, th- I thought she, she, she kind of looks like Emma Frost a little bit, too. From <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, here's something I don't understand. These are supposed to be like the most attractive man in the galaxy. <laughs> what the doesn't he give off like pheromones yeah, or something? Yeah, but like also that? they yeah. say he's very hot though. Like, like ooh, Leia's like, oh, he's so I like, like your green before skin. He, before he lets that off, Leia's like, oh, he's very attractive. Yeah. yeah. Do you think? Do you really think Disney would adapt all of that? Really well, no. But part? the thing is, this there's a lot of sex in this book, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but there's not a problem. More though. sex like, than it's... Attack of the Clones. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like it's not bad though. I mean, yeah, it's not like the thing. The thing that graphic strikes me is We're that not... it's a, it's a it's a fun story. Mm-hmm. We're it's not very, watching. We're not reading uh, Fifty Shades of Rendar or anything. Right? <laughs> Fifty Shades of Shizor. <laughs> but it's like it's a fun story, and it makes sense. And it and it's. I mean, here's the thing: is the the time frame between Empire and Jedi is the one that they can exploit to no end, and I get why they mm-hmm. would do it. But you can say the same. And I think that Clone Wars is probably canon because of the fan that there would have been a fan outcry. Like if if they bought this in the 90s and they're like Shadows of the Empire doesn't exist, people would have they would have made that canon back yeah. then. Mm-hmm. But I think and also the Clone Wars that's a an era they don't want to touch, I think. And so they're fine with being like, yeah, yeah, Clone Wars is it because we never want to do that again, which I think is a mistake. But they that's how they feel about it and that's that's what I think about. Yeah. Well, if there was a TV show or something like that, I'm sure there would have been some type of outcry if like there was a Two season TV show that was basically Shadows of the Empire. That maybe that something like that would have uh, gotten more of an outcry. But well, yeah, I, like you said, it's just a book and uh, and the game but, and comics on oh, comics yes, and toys. Right. Yes, I'd be willing to bet if that thirteen uh, thirteen game ever got made, there'd be mm. some Shizor up in that. There'd be yeah, something. that'd be a good call. Here's there a question you. for you: You guys, were old, you guys had toys of this, correct? Uh, I, shadows? Uh, I yeah. did. I did not. You didn't, but you you. I, I had the out, I had the outrider. You had the outrider. So people you had the had, outrider, was, amazing. Yeah, so wow. people had had these figures. This is Luke, by the way. Oh what? Yeah. Spoilers. Um, but anyway, so so people had these toys, and in the nineties, I would say a lot of Star Wars toys were Shadows of the Empire. How like? It, it, you know what? It came out when like the the special edition came out, so they were re-releasing all the well, toys, they, this, all the fi- this figures. Was, yeah, this came first, and then that one. Uh, yeah, this came in, and the special edition came. It was all. That's oh, oh sorry. Other- what I meant was they were planning that, and so they started re-releasing the figures because yes. I had the figures right. when I was a kid. Yes, and they're not the original ones. But what I'm saying with this though, with yeah. Shadows of the Empire here, is is that kids that were that age had these figures, and now these figures don't exist and i think the figures is more than the books because these are like people genuinely grew up loving dash render they played this game i don't know how but they played it duck no one ever <laughs> no i don't think i really want to know if anyone has beaten this game let me know because i'm pretty oh, I'm sure, sure they have I, I, I beat it on hard yeah oh shut up oh, I, didn't do it, I didn't do it on hard yeah uh, I, I, I needed to see the, the uh, uh it's the jedi escape. actually <laughs> it's jedi, jedi yeah. is that what it is okay yeah, so actually. rob's a liar we know that <laughs> but anyway no this yeah. game came out i remember how hard it was yeah, uh, and it was just frustrating to me, and I was like, duck. "Well, why isn't he Super yeah. Mario? That, you could have ducked there. I could have done that." <laughs> anyway, so you didn't have the toys. You had the Outrider. How do you feel that? Well, the Outrider, it's, it's it is in a New Hope. Call it what you want. It's in. A <laughs> I, I want it to be in a New Hope. I'll, I'll agree with you. Okay, they could say whatever they want, but that ship yeah. is in a New Hope. But how do you feel that that ship is like that doesn't exist? I mean, I don't know. I mean the. In terms of action figures, there was a lot of action figures that got released mm-hmm. for stuff like for comic books and like you know there's like Revan figures that technically aren't aren't really like uh, yeah, there's a Mara J that, that came out around like that. yeah Mara well that's Jade. a that's a whole so other. but yeah in terms of uh, in sh- uh, figures Shadows of the Empire got an actual proper like release yeah. mm-hmm. with with they everything. treated it like a movie they did. yeah they did. there was they a did. soundtrack we didn't mention there's a soundtrack <laughs> yeah. for this thing oh yeah from the, yes. from oh I can't remember his name I just I looked uh, up. It from with an L right no it's, I think it's John uh, McClamey but he were, did the last of the one he can soundtrack like his <laughs> and now he's done a bunch of Tinkerbell straight to DVD stuff but he's like a legit guy anyway sorry Rob go on. so here's the funny thing is that I oh, I didn't actually I, when I was wanting to refresh my memory about this I didn't read the book I 
listen to the uh, audiobook instead because I just wanted a different experience in terms of that way. And the funny thing is that you can tell that they use some of the soundtrack, but there's other stuff that are just kind of poorly done, like really bad like music scores where it's like she, she does something like it's like now my plan is coming to fruition. It's like dun 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 dun, <laughs> pretty much just like that, right? <laughs> it's uh, those types of music scores, right? And like it's funny that you're asking me about how to pronounce cer- certain things. This is a poorly done audiobook because there's a lot of there's a lot of things like in, in addition to those sound cues, there's a lot of things that were mispronounced. Uh, I, I wrote down some of them. Uh, Bespin is Bespin. <laughs> and Coruscant is Chorus Cant. Oh, <laughs> was it you George know Lucas doing the audiobook? No, I, I, fair- I, I, I misremembered who was the name. In but, fairness, yeah. though, if you would have listened to that in 1996 and you heard Chorus Cant, you would have no idea. Yeah, exactly. That's the be one like, thing oh, they could have yeah. I've been, I've been re- So maybe actually Coruscant, it can't be wrong because George Lucas made what's the what's the character's name who flies a ship in uh, Phantom Menace and goes that's Coruscant the whole ci- the whole planet is uh, one big city. Rick <laughs> He's my favorite. He needs to be in every Star Wars movie. Disney. You have to bring him back because any t- like imagine if he was in Force Awakens. Just that's Hosnian Prime. <laughs> yeah, he would be the best. <laughs> that's Hosnian Prime. This Nothing's is, ever going to this is Tokenata. Years ago. It, it, it sounds like he would be the Rick Flag of the Star Wars universe. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was the he was the best. I don't even care what anyone says. <laughs> that's cool. Can whole I just say that Rick Flag in Suicide Squad side act part looks a lot like Daryl Lewis? Ooh, Daryl, Daryl, can you come here for a second? <laughs> All right, he doesn't want to come here. For a second. No. Brock, how are you doing in this game over here? Uh, I'm good. That? I'm oh, on yeah. my way to finding IG88 in the junkyard. This is the best level too. What level is this? The junkyard. <laughs> <laughs> is there, he's, he's, he's using this thing uh, as a pattern uh, ram. It doesn't say. Wampa stomp. <laughs> that's that's the code. <laughs> yeah. That's the code. So you unlock all the levels. Oh, there you I go, guys. guys. If anybody wants to unlock a level, it's Wampa, Wampa stomp. <laughs> It unlocks all the I levels. I think. I believe that's yeah. what it was. We've had this game for ages. <laughs> I forgot how you do it, but you can actually like play as like stormtroopers oh and God, ATSDs really? and stuff like that with that code. By the yeah. way, I'm Battlefront. I, I finally got a. I'm a Rodian head when I'm a rebel now, and I'm a stormtrooper with the with the red patch. <laughs> right. Nice. So just so everyone knows, Battlefront Two news came out this week. Uh, single player is having it for sure. Uh, is IG available? No, and it's oh. going to be, but it's going to span uh, multiple eras. So well, it could be good. very interesting. Very interesting going. But not Shadows of the Empire era. Shadow Imagine if Battlefront put Dash Rendar oh. in it. Oh. You can't That's because it's words. not canon. I have a question for Rob. Hmm? So you've read the audiobook. Yes. You can't now. read an audiobook, Andy. Just... <laughs> you've experienced the audiobook. I've experienced it, yes. My question is about oh. Shizor's voice. Because oh, I'm okay. really hoping, judging by how he looks on the cover of this book, I'm really, really hoping they made him sound like Billy Zane. Please tell uh, oh. me. No, they did not. In <sighs> fact, it was uncanny. If you were to listen to like Billy parts Zane. where he's... If, if you were to listen to parts of this and then was to watch Rebels afterwards, an, an episode with Thrawn in it, Thrawn and Sheezer sound exactly the same. Yeah, I can Seriously? see that. They they sound like it's exactly like Lars Mikkelsen. Like they're they're similar in terms of voices. Oh, you know his name now, but not on the trivia contest. <laughs> no, no, no. Saying. It's ingrained in my mind in mind now. With, with that uh, accent and everything. Yeah, very very close, very Damn, close. Like, like, but he talks like very slow, methodical, just like. Just I like, like to think he sounds wrong. like George Takei. George Takei. <laughs> that, that's Billy Zane. I, right. I, Drew Strews and Drew Billy Zane's face. Not that's in this book. Be. In this book, in he this does book, not look like. And even in the video game, he does not look like Billy Zane. In terms of the the voice reader who's like reading the voices in this, the other one that he does very poorly and so weird. I already had a short discussion about it with you. Luke's voice in this, he sounds more feminine than Leia does in this. In this thing. The can voice you, that he puts on. Can you give us sounds, an example? Oh, uh, like like he's ten years old and like maybe like on the verge of becoming a woman, a girl. Uh, can I and, interrupt you for a second? And where is it? which one is that? In the very bottom. Can you see that? Daryl, can you see what that looks like? That's Leonardo DiCaprio as Dash Rendar. <laughs> if anyone can see the bottom. Get what the here. heck? Look at that. That is Leonardo DiCaprio oh, wow. as that Dash really Rendar. Close. Are you done? No. It just seems like... Oh, Brock's, oh Brock Brock yeah. is yeah. cameraman number two. It's going <laughs> up. It's a webcam, dude. Uh, we are the and three the, best friends. And, and, and the other voices that were... That was confusing, especially when there were scenes where they would both be in the same scene. His Lando voice is the exact same as a Dash Rendar voice. Oh. So if they're having a conversation, I can't tell who's <laughs> who's talking because Brock, they're you, almost exact. Brock, have you read the Lando comic? Yeah, I have the first three, oh. and I got the so- signed by Charles Soule, oh. the writer. Nice. Uh, here's a here's something for you. 
Yeah, L- Lando's dialogue is written very well in Shazam. How is it written in uh, in the comic? Does it sound like Lando? Like when you read it, do you immediately go to Billy D. Williams? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's he's slick, you know. It's right. it was a good. Uh, I think it only went for six or seven issues because now Charles Soule is writing Poe Dameron, uh, and I haven't seen it on the stocks in a while. But yeah, it was a fun. Uh, he, it was like he was up to hijinks. It's probably like, I bet uh, when we see Han Solo, I should reread it and be like, yep, this is the same vein. So I actually yeah. wrote something down here when I was reading Shadows uh, because it was it was a quote, not like a quote from Lando, but a quote about something Lando did that I just thought was the most hilarious thing in the world. Um, so this is a quote from the book where it says, because the Falcon is breaking down and they're trying to get away. It says, Lando submitted in a colorful fashion that Han's ancestry was in question and that his personal habits left much to be desired. <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Is Lando in this book? Is it oh, he's big yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah. And he's, I thought he was written very well. Uh, I thought they trusted him a little too much for being that soon after. Empire, well, that was, it, was, it was cool. That was an interesting thing at the near the beginning of the book when it was Leia's point of view and when, they were, when she was talking about Lando is that they kind of changed... Uh, in a way, what happens in Empire Strikes Back? Because she says that once she finds out that Lando uh, was playing, like playing the Empire and not really turning on them, seemed like it didn't seem like th- that way. I don't know about you guys. That that's what happened in Empire. It was like well, that, at the end, he, he, at the end, he does. He does, but it never seemed like he was playing the Empire the whole time. It seemed like it seemed to me Look, like never an underestimate the power of Lobot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, it just seemed to me like in that in that thing, it was. He realized he made a mistake when uh, Vader kept ch- changing, you know, uh, the deal. Right? Yeah. He's like, "Pray, don't change it any further," yeah, yeah. and so forth. It seemed like he was constantly changing. That's what ter- made him turn to say, "Okay, I gotta team uh, team back with Leia and them because that's the only way I could possibly get out of this." Hmm. Whereas in this, they kind of allude that he was. Yeah, um, in this, he, she full on says, "It's like, hey, he was playing the Empire," and so like it seemed. Uh, well, maybe he told her that. Per- maybe perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, kind of weird, saving face. Lando's kind of weird, but then it's just kind of weird that Leia would just automatically just believe him. But, <laughs> but that's what he was doing. Well, she has to trust somebody. Yeah, I guess we've so. gone on too but, long. Okay, guys, I want to ask you something about uh, Prince Jizor. Prince <laughs> Razor, Prince Jizor. Hey, that was the, um, that's the pronunciation that's in the book. <laughs> so I might be wrong too. I liked it up. So there. what? I liked it up there. Mostly it's Jizor. Or she's or she's yeah yeah but it's, it's, it's an X that's how you do xylophone. <laughs> it's Prince um, Billy Zane thing. It's uh, Prince Billy Zane. So what I want to bring up though is Thrawn was recently brought into Rebels and now he is canon and he's going to get his own book in April. Uh, yeah. The Dark Prince, Black Sun. Is this gonna? You guys think that we're going to get a book? I don't think he's going to show up in Rebels. I think Rebels is is done. Do you think he's going to show up in a book and possibly some other kind of something else? She's or yeah. Mm, it's uh. I don't know. It's I guess it's possible. To be honest, if I was to guess something, like, you know, we were saying how Pablo Hidalgo's stance on, on Rendar is so strong. The th- thing I thought was that, you know, because uh, Rendar and Shizor are so linked, at least in terms of uh, Rendar's backstory, that maybe, you know, if, if Pablo Hidalgo could say whatever he wants, but if, like, the new Holland Stone movie is extremely successful, and then Lord Mill all of a sudden say, "Hey, we want to do a sequel, and we want to put Dash Rendar in it in Han Solo's backstory." I'm sure that's a way that he would come in, and a way that Shizor could come in too. That's a good point. You know, Dash Rendar has a great backstory on his own of his own. Yeah. The way the Empire treated his family—that yeah. is a fantastic story. That I think that they are going to retcon that, and they're going to bring that into canon. It might not be Dash Rendar, but I think and I mean, somebody he's, is. Gonna... He's a Karelian, and so is. Han, obviously. Yeah. I don't know why so, they made him a, Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they could have made him a hammerhead. They should have made him a no. hammerhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. How awesome would that Where's have been? Where's Dengar from? Whatever, wherever Dengar's from. He's from yeah. Liverpool. Yeah. From Liverpool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dengar. Uh, so, Shizor, Brock. Yeah. Is he going to show up? Are you going to read a book on Shizor? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I actually... Uh, Do you think he's too sexual for the new... No, I know what I think. If he's going to come up, I think he'll be in a Han Solo movie. Because that's exactly what we need. We need an underbelly. It doesn't have to be Jabba, though. We, it would be great if we get to see I think more Jabba's, Jabba. I think Jabba's showing up in, in Han Solo. Yeah, but, but like, you know, you just guy. throw him in the background, and then maybe later he can be your hero baby. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, you no, know, I think, like, all these characters we've seen, all these disreputable, like, under, like scum of the villainy characters, we've seen a movie like, a, like Han Solo. Uh, and I just fell off the train. Um, <laughs> what is yeah. that, sludge? 
Yeah, we're well, in the you're in the junkyard. Oh right, gotcha. It's garbage. I I'm not really paying attention to Wampa Stampa. <laughs> Wampa Stampa. Um, but yeah, I it would be great. And would I read it? Yes. Uh, I, I think it would be great in the comics too. I think he. I think he. A comic. I think is a is a great move. Let's move on now. Yeah. To something that I really, really want to talk about. I brought it up to all of you. If you, if you have this book at home, read along. Go <laughs> to uh, turn to page one hundred six, chapter twenty three. Uh, and it's the fifth page. In Why? It's like we're in church. Read the hymn. <laughs> Do I have to read two, with you? Is that why you're leaning in three, trying to get a kiss? Tell me four, what page five. Here we go. So 217 in, in the original <laughs> version. So th- this stuck out to me greatly when I started reading oh, it. Oh, yes. It's when Luke Skywalker yeah, uh, is uh, is caught by a bounty hunter, and the bounty hunter oh. <laughs> is going to bring him. Who's the bounty hunter bring him to? Vader or Black Sun? Uh, I think Black Vader. Sun. The Vader? Yeah. Because they were no, to Vader and no, 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 no. I thought the bounty hunters it's, were hired by Shizor. By, by Black Sun, and then Vader's going to go get him, and oh, they find the bounty hunter. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. So, so what happens is he gets he gets taken. He's in pri- he's in you know like a prison cell, and they, they treat him okay in the prison cell. But he wants to escape the prison cell, so he's like, oh, I remember this thing that Obi Wan. Do you want to act out the scenes, Kevin? Uh, not really, but we can. <laughs> you so. So all of a sudden, I'm reading this, and this popped up because Luke became aware of the guards feed her blah blah. He that he needed to visit a refresher. Uh, that he was tired of standing here holding a blast rifle, watching him. Um, well, let's go. So then, all of a sudden, Luke said, "Like says, open the door," and the and the guard says, "Huh? Who's there? <laughs> you must open the door." Uh, I don't know why he's British. Must I, open the door. Uh, you must put down it's your Daniel rifle. Too, you, right? you must you must put down your rifle and open the door now. I must put down my rifle. Open the door now. And then uh, Luke says, got him. But then he, he loses his focus and the guard says, what? <laughs> and then lost him. Concentrate, Luke. Open the door. Luke put the thoughts of victory and loss out of his mind. The only thing that mattered was the guard. Open the door. Yes. Open the door. The guard's key card slipped into the slot. The lock clicked. So uh, it goes on, whatever. Well, then he tells him to take a nap. Yeah. So the thing that totally got me right away was Ray in Didn't The that Force Awakens. a lot. And it like was Daniel James Craig, Bond. actually. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that guard was it. No, but like, but honestly, you read that and you, the house, <laughs> like you that yeah. can is that a coincidence? Cherry picking, baby. Cherry picking. You think so? Yeah, I think, you think so it's cherry too. picking. Maybe, so maybe Lawrence Kasdan's a big fan of this book. Mm-hmm. Is he? Uh, maybe. No, you have I don't no know. idea. His son yeah. is. He's writing Han Solo. So <laughs> Jake Kasdan. But it, the, the, that is just so similar and. Ray is a Mary Sue. Is Luke a Mary Sue? <laughs> like, has everyone forgotten this? Nobody even knows. Everybody on the planet read this book in '96, and nobody remembered that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I love it. that. It's not even like it's kind of similar. Yeah. It's pretty much word for word at one point. It's like, it put the rifle. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? That is Ray's scene. I've seen this on film already. Do you think that was uh, an Easter egg for Shadows fans who no. were no? No, I genuinely think that it was a it's a coincidence. Mm. But I also think that. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> I know. I think it's a coincidence, but I think it's a crazy, crazy coincidence. Even the circumstances of the capture, like Luke was being yeah. held to be taken to somebody more powerful, and yeah. Snoke was saying, "Bring me the girl." Maybe it was literally something that just like uh, uh, something that came into their mind when they were writing it, and like they didn't even know it was just an influence, a subtle influence. That's right. And Brock, thought of. Brock, I want to bring this over to you now. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Okay. I'm back. Going on your thoughts. Let's say they knew about this. Yeah. And Ray is waiting to see Snoke. Is Snoke a new incarnation of Shizor? <laughs> scissors. Scissors. Shizor. Is he those like scissors. Shizor. Like, could Snoke be a new in- iteration uh, of Shizor? Think, like, think about it. They just, like... <laughs> he's not... Let's say he's not... Uh, because apparently he he has knowledge in the force, so he's not exactly Shizor, but he's something similar. Where he run this underground thing and watch the emperor from afar, and maybe he's on the ship and he does get blown up, and and that's how he gets all ugly. Because and also J.J. Uh, J. Abrams has said that Snoke was an attractive man when he was younger. Okay, mm. Mm. damn James. But he also maybe. said man, right? <laughs> well, I, Shizor is a man though. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I like, just a male, a male of whatever just say species. That this yeah, character whatever. you're shooting at looks yeah. incredibly underrated. It's uh, yes. you know, it's uh, well, I'm shooting at nothing now. <laughs> uh, where is he? It's IGA. But back to what James is saying. Uh, possibly. I mean, yeah, they definitely have this like 
cunning about them. Like, there's a definitely. I mean, we don't know what Snoke's plan is, but like, you definitely there he is. Uh, so the T one thousand. Um, supplying the sound effects. <laughs> It, it's a it's possibility though. Like my gut reaction is that uh, Snoke is not like Zizor. Like it's just their their characters are so slightly different. Like in just like he's charismatic and Snoke is like well, I'm a big giant hologram for. Well, now he is. Yeah, but uh, like maybe whatever changed him to look like that is had, like scarred him and his personality to an extent, right? IG-88 is hard to kill. Yeah, he's impossible. <laughs> and that Zed thing is useless. It does, it does work. I, you are right, but it is useless. I, I'm like, I keep holding the controller thinking that I can direct my do this when I... <laughs> like, like the Wii. <laughs> quit living in the future, Brock. Like, Rob, could Snoke, be any part of Snoke be bored from Shizor? Snoke and, Snoke and Shizor? Snoke and, Snoke and a pancake? <laughs> um... I, I guess it's a small possibility, some type of possibility. I like that better than, actually, you know what? No, I I I think Lebo is probably uh, uh, <laughs> Snoke. No, uh, no, it's it's not a bad, it's not a horrible theory, but it's uh, it's a very unlikely. I think like just the fact that they would uh, adapt. Maybe it's possibly because maybe if the the Kazans were a fan of them, but I don't know if Kathleen Kennedy would in any way put such a semi-minor minor character as a, such a major character. In but it, it wouldn't matter, universe. though. It's the backstory, right? It's True. taking the yeah. personality traits in the backstory. Andrew, what do you think? Mm. I, I really like this, James. I think you, you stumbled on something here. It's if, if it is him, Lucasfilm would probably play it, and they'd be smart to play it this way, as not a big twist of a reveal because so many people don't yeah. know who she's or is. It would just be something mentioned in passing, be like, I was once this crime lord, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. And then okay. guys like us would be sitting in the theater be like, oh my God, I know who that is. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll mic drop and walk out. <laughs> yes. And then you guys are like, by the way, James, he found out later that it's actually not him. Yeah. It's actually Dash Rendar. It's Cardula the Hutt. Lebo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I like this a lot. This is, this is interesting. That's very cool, yeah. I mean, because, uh, yeah, the thing that, that J.J. Abrams at one point said that Snoke was a very attractive man, and that seems to be forgotten. It's not even on the Wiki- Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, did I make that up? But I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure you <laughs> said that. Uh, I got to watch. The, have you guys seen the commentary on The Force Awakens? Because we all I bought it. Uh, right? I bought the original. Yeah, we all, we all were one. suckers and bought it when we were supposed to. And I didn't <laughs> buy it when we should have got the 19-disc yeah. set. Brock, are you going to get the 19-disc yeah. set? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for my camera to come up. Yes, I will buy the thing. Daryl is, is hard. Daryl left. He's playing NHL 17. Right <laughs> <laughs> He's online. Can't you hear him? Uh, thanks a lot, Daryl, by the way. We really appreciate Thank everything you, you did for us. Uh, IG88 is sprinkling. <laughs> He's, sprinkling. He's, sprinkling. He's doing the sprinkle thing. <laughs> but to your, to your point, James, there, are, there were two things that I noticed reading this book that I thought this could come into play later. One of them was a small thing where it was it was in this book and it was in the Thrawn trilogy and that is space casinos. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Han Solo movie. Yeah, we gotta no, see. we're getting it. We're getting a space casino, I believe, in episode eight. For real? For real. Uh, they shot in Croatia, and apparently some of the set stuff. There's rumors that there's yeah, casinos, that's so yeah. right. Because oh, they're like damn. wearing tuxedos. And yeah, it's but weird. Han Solo, like, I think you're 100. percent Oh yeah, we yeah. gotta see some. We gotta see some Sabac going on in there. Yeah. But oh yeah. The other thing that I noticed, and it was right there in the prologue, and this is something, especially with J.J. Abrams hovering around, this is something that <laughs> I really want to see happen, and I think it's really likely. Is the prologue of this book is the conversation between Vader and the Emperor in Empire Strikes Back via hologram, mm-hmm. and the Emperor has yes, yes, I right won. I just him. killed IG88. You show him, Brock. <laughs> you underrate that, that droid. Um, he's got the Emperor sitting right next to Shizor during that teleconference yeah. call. Shizor's just kind of sitting there waiting for the Emperor to finish, and then he finishes, and he's like, sorry about that, Shizor. And I was like, how cool would that be to see that happen? Like, some kind of, like, in the new in the next Star Wars story where it's like some new character is, uh, you know, in the middle of something, and then some other character next to him and is like, uh, oh, hold on, um... And they send out like some kind of message that we're familiar with. Mm. You know, we see something from whether it's the prequels, whether it's the originals, whatever. Just a different, a same scene from a different point of view. And Lost did that shit all the time. So if JJ is still on board there, I can totally see him 
kind of pulling one of those, be like, hey, Ryan, sneak this into episode eight. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be totally cool to see Snoke be oh, there. Oh, absolutely, and that's perfect. But where do you tell that, though? <sighs> that's the thing. I want to. Snoke seems like it's going to be a book, but I don't want to see that in a book. No, it's got to be. Yeah, yeah, I know. Imagine if, like, they just, like, literally do that and just fit Shizor into random scenes that happen in, like, canon stuff. Oh, man, and amazing. it was just, like, you know, uh, at, at the Death Star at the end of, like, the Battle of Yavin, he's just in a ship leaving the Death, Death Star and he could shoot down the Millennium Falcon, but he doesn't. Yeah. He just leaves. <laughs> because he thinks that he's going to kill Vader in some type of way and doesn't. But, yeah, I don't know. Like just to, like, just like, to do random stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, little things. Like, yeah. uh, Vader gets in the elevator in Cloud City and Lando says, this deal's getting worse all the time. And he walks down like, the hall and he walks up to like some guy who is Snoke now and he's like Shizor is literally the Forrest Gump of this universe yeah. he's at everywhere yeah. <laughs> Brock how you doing over there uh, I'm now invading Boba Fett's hangar when was the last time you played this game uh, probably in the 90s <laughs> this was not my favorite of the Star Wars games on N64 no we'll do more uh, we'll do a Star Wars uh, I, we'll I think this game. is like the f- longest I've ever actually played this game. Yeah, You're I like first this, person, which is really oh, I was still on the ship. That's what was taking it, so long. <laughs> isn't it weird how much this looks like Wolfenstein 3D? And oh, Doom? It's, it looks like, like they Doom. all look the same it back then. It feels like Doom, yeah. very. Square. But like Wolfenstein, like I don't know, like I I have like maybe because it was like the first of those games, but like I could play that and feel okay with this. I'm like no. This well, could be better. I like, this looks like Battlefront now, what I just did earlier today. By the way, I played Battlefront on hard without trying to die on one of the missions. Oh, I, made it, it, the, I made it to the last I made it to the last <laughs> yeah. level. Five bad guys left and the ATSD took me out. I forgot he was there and he shot Which me one, one Tantui? shot. Uh, no, Hoth. I can't do that. Oh, crazy. <laughs> the easy one. <laughs> I was I was I was just like doing it and then I died once I came back but I beat your time so I'm very very thankful for that. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> By like 20 seconds I was like, yeah, take that. <laughs> <laughs> Shadows of the Empire. Let's go back to this. <laughs> so we're all on board that Shizor is going to be Snoke. <laughs> Leia kicked him very hard in the groin. That's got to cause some scarring. Right, well, let, let's talk about something that we're going to start doing. <laughs> I dropped the book. I'm drunk. <laughs> we're going to start. We're going to be doing on this channel. We're going to do some uh, votes of no confidence, which is like a versus series. This character versus this character. We won't spoil anything, but Jizor, uh will be showing up at one point. You brought something. You wrote the first one now, and I want to know your stance on what you say in that. And I, I had a reaction to it. So tell me about that a little bit. So basically you want to know which of the two sides I agree with? No, I want you the the end your end game at the very last thing you write about what Jizor wants to do to Leia. Oh, yeah. That's just it, maybe that is why this isn't canon. Exactly. <laughs> because the, the whole point of this was James said write write sort of a, a point counterpoint. Who's better? Jizor or Thrawn? Why? Cite specific examples. Uh leave your answer on the line. Um so I did that. And then when it got to the point where it's like, okay, why is Thrawn bad and why is Shizor bad? The only thing I could keep going back to about Shizor, there were other points, but the thing I ended with was, guys, he tries to rape Leia. <laughs> he tries to rape Princess Leia. That's a thing that happens in this yeah. book. That's a Star like, Wars on it. Consent wasn't a thing in the expanded universe. <laughs> no, it was, yeah. it was not. It was not. The consent is not canon, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I like I said, Shizor was... That was literally, he fixated on on sex and specifically sex with Leia as soon as he became aware of her existence. So the thought of Disney making this canon word for word is really risky. I mean, I don't know. I'm not condoning it, but when you think about it, like Jabba was trying to like force himself. You're right. But right, he's yeah. a slug and he doesn't say words and you're like, Oh, that's cute, he's got a tongue, but it's like uh, it's like that's maybe, maybe that's why Shizor and Jabba are friends. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's what they share in common. Well, I mean, I guess I think what you have to think about is with these characters, they have to go against Vader and Palpatine. Right? They're uh, you know they have the they can use the force to yeah. do whatever they want. So how do you make a villain that tops that? Yeah, apparently he has to be handsy. That's uh, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> he wears like a like what is, like a terry cloth or he wears kind of something where Leia sees him in it and she's like that hides nothing. <laughs> I can see but his whole. He's anatomy. supposed to be super attractive. I can see your moons of Alderaan. <laughs> I feel like the guy who did the artwork for him and the, and Steve Perry, the writer, didn't talk. 
<laughs> you know, it'd be interesting to seeing like a scene or something like written, like a, a volume, let's say, where it's Krennic and Shizor in some type of way interacting. But is there like two of the ones that like don't like specific people within like high ranking members of the Empire? I would right? love to get more Krennic. I think. I think we're done with them. But in a book or something, though, that... Yeah, yeah because I, look, it, gonna... it never says, like, when Shizor exactly came into the Empire. But I think it's sla- thought it, to be before... And it doesn't matter, because he's not canon hope, anymore. Right? No, I know, I know, but... So yeah. Thrawn, they brought Thrawn in 30 years uh, before he should have, or 10 years before he should have, or So whatever, he could right? come in whenever, yeah. Yeah, they could be like, guess what? Shizor uh, was in the prequel time. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's on Coruscant. And Shizor just shows up randomly on on Rebels or something like that, and he's just getting really handsy with uh, with uh, a Sabine or something. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> if he touches I, hair, I'm gonna sue somebody. I want no hair. more. Oh I God. want I want no more of this on on Rebels. I, I want no, Rebels no, to that, stay away. That from, might be too much for Disney. Re, look, XD. Rebels is having its fun with Thrawn and all those other things. Just stay like <laughs> bring these into movies and books and, and whatnot. I just and, picture like it happens on Rebels, and then the episode ends with a PSA. Like if someone tries to touch you. <laughs> In a place that makes you feel it's like, like saved by the battle or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no hope with dope. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! So, so, Brock, how would you rank this book? What are your thoughts on this? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, I mean, it it adds so much to the to this. Like it, what I loved about when I was a kid, it explained like where they got the Boosh costume because. Leia dresses like they all dress up to to, to yeah, screw yeah. with uh, Black Sun. Like they all be, pretend to be uh, bounty hunters, and then it's also I believe you get to see Luke make his green lightsaber. Yes. Isn't that yeah. like yes, the do. beginning? And that's also something that uh, probably can't be canon anymore because of the way he makes it. He like boils the crystal. And... <laughs> oh they, yeah, they yeah. Does he... the, what do they call the crystal? They didn't even call it a crystal. They call oh. it, um... Is, it, oh, is it a jewel that they call it? No, no, it's not a jewel. They, they say something, yeah. Uh, they, like, there's always been a stone in there. Yeah, that mm. was Rob, always understood. You, you made it to page forty six before you called it. <laughs> well, at one point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. A, I can't remember what he calls it, but he does it at Ben's house. R two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, and he almost blows himself up. That's the best part. <laughs> I would love to. You know, here's another question that I want to throw at you. We'll start with Rob. Rob, give me the answer to this one. Would you be okay? With a movie or Netflix series or something coming out uh, that took place between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, starting all star, starting, starring Alden Ehrenreich as Han Solo, frozen in carbonite, or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe right before that. He just frozen. Uh, it. <laughs> uh, let's see, Millie Bobby Brown as uh, Millie Bobby Brown. I'll say that without mumbling. As the Princess Leia, uh, Sebastian Stan as as Luke Skywalker. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> You're like is, all over the place. No, with actors. making my dreams come These true. Are just, this is. Just a thing, and uh, and 1997 released Jabba the Hutt as Jabba. <laughs> um, but would you be on board if they did all of that? Uh, Donald Glover as Lando, and whatnot. If they did a story like this, but recast all those parts, uh, recasting would be extremely hard. I think just recasting all those roles, like you know, we don't even know how Alden Aaron Rex can be to be honest as Han Solo. Like uh, it doesn't matter. He's frozen in carbonite at this point. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, so but either way, Ford. then you're you're recasting all those other roles, and that's that that's such a difficult thing, and especially even even possibly even suggesting that so soon after what happened with Carrie. I mean, uh, like even thinking about recasting Leia is just something. That's well, we're recasting like, her from thirty years ago, though. We're not recasting her in episode no, nine. No, I I I know, I know, but um, like, if anything, like I would say, like. Do more of a um, like a similar thing to what uh, Marvel's doing right now with Spider Man, where they're doing an animated movie. That's oh, just completely yeah. separate from it. If they did an animated uh, movie in some type of style, had some someone take control of it and just did that instead, I think people would be more open to doing having different voices as the characters. But do Obviously, you think like something like that would be? easier to do and and i think it like just just the fact that you're recasting so many characters all at the same time could be hard for a lot of fans to swallow and i think that'd be the case with a lot of it bro do yeah. you think that if we believe in in the new han solo and the new lando and the new jabba from 1997 <laughs> do you do would you buy into a story taking place around that time isn't that what the next movie is going to be like 
When he's sorry, when Han is like it shows in the Empire movie or oh yeah, Uh, but with a new cast playing because uh, Mark Hamill's too old and yeah 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 yeah. I I would yeah like this uh, to deal with the age or deal with the character actors yeah uh, like a CG movie like Rob just said that'd be good or an animated movie that'd be sweet. I mean think of Zizor like animated would look awesome like but you won't get the audience though. Uh, I don't know. Like, I think you'd be surprised on what people will watch. Uh, you're going to get the diehards, but you're not going to get the casual fans as much, though. Because when it's a cartoon, they're like, it's a cartoon. And it but, doesn't matter to your parents if it's if it's canon. It matters that it's a cartoon. But ask yourself this. If Han Solo is a success, wouldn't you kind of say, oh, you could basically do anything? Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm doing There's a story to be to. told <laughs> that they did in between... Empire and Jedi. And yeah. I'm just saying, Andrew, should they tell the story with a new cast? Do you have a problem with that? Yes. Um, Andrew's not invited back. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happens between Turns five and six, I always just kind of assumed it would be a book or maybe a comic. A comic, you know, you get the best of both worlds. You can see them. You can They can make them draw mm-hmm. Tron as young as they want. Um, and I wouldn't... I want the Star Wars stories to move away to give us little bits and pieces of what we know, but for the most part, give us a whole bunch of new stuff because remember, we want to buy new toys and stuff too. And if it's all just like Leia again, Han again, then it's like, well, I already have that toy. Um, yeah, yeah, but you don't have you don't have that Rendon. That's right. Or Luke right, in this know. outfit. Well, yeah. We do, but, <laughs> but that, yeah, that's the only like a book or comic is the only way that I can see it being like even animated doesn't like I'm a I'm a big big fan of Ninja Turtles. But when back in 2007, when they were like, there's a new Ninja Turtles movie, guys, and it's a cartoon, I was like, yeah, it doesn't grab you because yeah. it's a cartoon. That's what I'm saying. I, I Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I'm like, if they throw it at me, I'm going to eat it up anyway. It mm. doesn't matter. Uh, as long as the cast is good, it doesn't really matter. These are characters. They're fake people. Like, it doesn't exist. You know, yeah. this person might represent this person, but I mean, if somebody else can pull it off, they can pull it off. It doesn't matter. Rachel in the, the Batman movies. Yeah. They went from Katie Holmes to uh, Katie Holmes 2.0. What's her name? Joy Hall, Joy Hall. Joy Hall. And then she got blown up and it was really sad. And you still felt it. Um, <laughs> I felt just, everything. That's just happy. I think Shadows of the Empire is a fantastic book. Everybody should read it. I think it should be canon. Uh, yeah. To an extent, you know, there's a, I mean, it's a good story. It's fun. It's, a, it's one of the most fun reads of the, um, of the, the Legends era. Speaking of the Legends era, what? I was just going to say, you know what it feels like? Because you mentioned the word fun. It feels like a Spielberg movie. It feels like if yeah, Spielberg had does. made a Star Wars, it would be this. It's amazing how much fun it is. Because I've read other Star Wars books, and they just don't uh, mm-hmm. they don't hit. Like, this one just hits. <laughs> and I don't even know. Has Steve Perry done another Star Wars? I don't know. And, like, I don't even know. Um, okay, here's a question. Final question before we go, before, before we go to top five. Brock, if they do and, uh, Shadows of the Empire Redux, a new book, yeah. book taking place in this era, do you want Steve Perry to come back much much like they did with Thrawn. Do you want that to happen? Yeah, I think uh, they should. I mean, <sighs> this book was great even back then. Like, so I think you could you could do it or you could not do it, and then new readers wouldn't care. But I think it'd be a nice like tip of the hat to all of us. So you know, he thought he thought up. Oh, I don't know. Did he think up all these things, or was he told, okay, you use this kind of character and this kind of character, or is it just like? Tell us what happens between these two movies. Yeah, I think there might have been more of that. And then here's Cor- like, and he had the planets run down and all of that. I totally would be on fine with it. Uh, Steve Perry, I mean, they're doing Timothy Zahn's doing Thrawn. They're giving him his due. This, yeah. I mean, this. I don't know if this is as big as Air to the Empire now, but I know when this came out. I remember I was 15 yeah. years old when this came out, and I remember seeing trailers on TV and stuff like that. And I remember it was such a big deal, and everybody read this book. And then a year later, the releases of the the movies came out, and then after that, the Phantom Menace, and it was like this one this punch, this one two punch before the prequels came, mm-hmm. and we were all ready for it, and we're all very excited for it. And so I don't know. I mean, it'd be totally cool. So I did look it up. Uh, in terms of books that he's read so and that he's written solo, this is the only one. But he's also co-written with Michael Reeves, Med Star One Battle Surgeons. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what? Med, Med Star Two Jedi Healer and Death yeah, Star. What? So uh, yeah, he wrote, he wrote Death Star. <laughs> so Andrew, Steve Perry, Shadows of the Empire. Did you say Med Star or Death Star? D- Death Star was the last oh. one, but Med Star were the first two. Oh, okay. Med Star One Jedi and two. Healer. Sorry, yeah. what was your question? Steve Battle Perry Surgeons rewriting this. Absolutely, one. get Steve Perry back. 
Uh, just to write anything. Just to write, if, if, they, if they do Shadows again, get him back because that shows that they're respecting him. Yeah. Faithfully, which is a song written by Steve Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, it all closes. Rob? Tomorrow. Yes. Steve Perry. Should he write another? I mean, uh, if if he's open, I don't even know if he's working. Like uh, this, this is just off of Wikipedia again. Apparently, this is what my phone defaults to. Just goes to Wikipedia. <laughs> they all do. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, if he's if he's still writing, if he's still actively writing books and stuff like that, yeah, you know, why not give give him a shot? Um, right. Get him to write something. All right, uh, She's our book. Right before we move on to our top five and end the show. Uh, I do want to say Shadows of the Empire was one of the original titles or rumor titles for The Force Awakens. So maybe that chapter with Luke Skywalker using it was not so much a coincidence. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Top five Legends books. These are books that are no longer canon that are legend. My number five is The Truce of Baccarat. Ooh. The Truce of Baccarat is a book, and I don't really remember much about it, but it was the very first Star Wars yeah. book I was ever given. I believe it takes place right after. It's Return, right after. Yeah, right after Return of Jedi, and I was very excited about that when I got it. It said that on the back of the book. I got it as a Christmas gift from my grandmother, and it was fantastic, and I loved <laughs> it. And I'm going to recommend it because uh, it was cool to see. Brock, you're number five. <laughs> my number five... And maybe people don't know this, because uh, there was two different things. Like, there was young reader, uh, like a young adult book, uh, and then there was a, like a sort of younger than young adult book about the Solo kids. There was one about Anakin Skywalker, which was the youngest, and then there's a series about Jason and Jaina uh, Solo. And then, oh, something happened to the video game. Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, so that was cool because they they all they all had the force, so they all uh, they all go to Luke's uh, Jedi Academy. So it's like you got this real taste of like what happens. Like uh, I think Jason and Jaina have a friend. Uh, their their friend is Lobaka, which is Chewbacca's <laughs> like nephew. Yeah, and so in uh, the younger version with Anakin, he his friend is this like blonde girl but she's a tuscan raider but she doesn't wear the stuff oh wicked and because and she likes in there they're, it's all on yavin 4 so she walks around barefoot cuz like it's like there's no sand here that doesn't say anything about sand but she i always thought that I always stuck out was like she went barefoot cuz it's like the the stones of the temple are cool and she's like this is great this is not tatooine <laughs> rob you number 5 uh my number 5 i mean to just to start off i have not read that many uh uh non ken book legends books so there's gonna be some some really big ones that are gonna be missing from this because i ju- just not have read them yet but anyway my number five uh is one that uh i just wanted more of and that's uh darth maul shadow hunter so it came out like not too long after phantom menace and it was literally like oh my god darth maul is awesome i gotta get me more darth maul and <laughs> i got i got this book just so i could get more darth maul and it's literally a book where Darth Maul can be the main character, and he's literally... It's like if Popkin gave him that mission in Phantom Menace, and it's just about him doing this mission. That's all it is. That's all, pretty much all it is. It's it's him and another uh, Jedi Padawan, or the other main characters, and uh, it's basically him hunting down this Jedi Padawan, Padawan and you get to see uh, Darth Maul be a, a badass still again. And, you know, spoiler alert, it doesn't go well for this Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew? Uh, my number five is the Jedi Academy trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson. I think they were like a sequel to the Thrawn trilogy. It was uh, it was about Luke and Mara Jade teaching kids on Yavin, and it was that kid Kip Durin. Do you guys know who that is? Do you know what I'm talking about? He was like this like surfer dude looking guy, and Han finds him in the Spice Mines of Kessel, and he's like really really strong in the Force, and uh, they recruit him. And long story short, he turns to the dark side and goes apeshit. But uh, it, it was it was good. It was. It was a trilogy of Jedi books. So. You can mm-hmm. can never go wrong. Robbie, yeah. number four. Uh, my number four. Just give me one second. Oh, I yeah, just I want everyone to know. I'm not. Going, Shadows of the Empire will not be, be on my list. I've decided not to put it on my list because well, this episode is all which has it. Obviously, I love Shadows of the Empire. I just want everyone to know that that's why it's not on my list. Well, number four is Shadows of the Empire <laughs> <laughs> for my list. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been talking about it the whole whole time. It's it's a cool book. It's a cool like you know nice little wedge in between the movies like no no <laughs> uh it's a, it's a nice little uh, you know prologue to uh 
to uh, between the movies. Like it's 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 a great it's a great fitting in thing to fill in holes and like you said, like you get so many little things. Like it's not canon anymore, obviously, because that's what this list is. Mm-hmm. But uh, if it's it was still legends. canon, you'd get you, you'd get reasons as to what how why things are like the way they are in Re- Return of the Jedi. So, yeah. Rock four. Number four for me. I just had it in my head and I forgot. Uh, oh God, what was it? Go to someone else. I had it in my. My head. number four is Heir to the Empire. What? Oh, wow. That's so low on the list <laughs> or high on the which, whatever. Uh, yeah, the reason it is is because it was it came out around a time where I didn't really uh, read the Star Wars books too much, so it doesn't have that place in my heart like it does so many other fans. I do love it. It's great. I mean, it's a list of stupid. I mean, it's a stupid list. I'll read them all. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, so that's the reason it's my number four is because it's a fantastic book. It's a great book. It's probably the best of them all. But it's my number four because of what it means to me. So there you go. Uh, Brock, can we go to you now or no? Andrew, number four. <laughs> oh, I remember now, but don't go to me. <laughs> my number four is Darth Plagueis because uh, I like Sith Lords and they're cool. And this one has a lot of them in it. Uh, almost too many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> almost too many. <laughs> it's, it's uh it's too very, many Jedi. If you like Game of Thrones or Sopranos and you like Sith, read Darth Plagueis. James it's Lucino. Exactly that. James Lucino. He's yeah, the was, man. Yeah. Bring Plagueis back. Hashtag. Uh, Plagueis. Well, he is canon. That He's one's canon. that one's pretty much at the top of my list for ones that I want to read. Like yeah. very soon. Can like, we go over to you now? Daryl, get before. my camera ready. <laughs> Get ready for Rock, Smith, okay, I'm your, ready. What is your number four uh, Legends book? My number four is the Han Solo like Chronicles oh. because it's always so, the one I brought up before where I listened to it on an audiobook and it scared the hell out of me because Chewbacca says Han, Han. I'm like, oh! <laughs> the Adventures of Han Solo is my Daryl. The Adventures of Han Solo is my number uh, three. So anyway, continue yours. I just so just number three ahead. for me would probably be. The Rogue Squadron, like, nice. uh, I don't have a specific title because it kind of expands the expanded universe and the um, comics. There's a, quite a bit, like a lot of the Dark Horse did a lot of stuff with that. And I haven't read, there's like so much that I haven't read on it. And it's, I think the popularity of that is what gave them the idea of like, hey, we could do a Rebel, a Rebel. <laughs> We could do Rogue One, which is not really the same kind of story, but the idea of like the soldiers are more important than the main characters. So, yeah. Andrew, uh, my number three is Shadows of the Empire. Oh, no. <laughs> why did we do a, a whole episode on this when nobody's number one? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, mine, mine, mine. In terms of this, I don't know if it's the same one as you, but mine was uh, X Wing Rogue Squadron, and it was a book where it was yeah, it was about pretty much Wedge was one of the main yeah. characters, and it's pretty much if you want a selling point, it's pretty much Top Gun, but ro- the Rogue Squadron. Guys. Yeah, it it's literally is. they. they, they Wedge has his co-pilot. There's uh, there's a Val Kilmer like character and everything and yeah. named Iceman. <laughs> Take my breath named away, plays during. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Andrew, what's your number two Legends book? My number two is the Thrawn trilogy. Uh, I didn't feel right kind of splitting up because as much as I like those three books, I find that they don't really have individual identities. Like when you think of Jedi, like it has its own identity. When you think of Attack of the Clones, it has its own identity. But those three books just kind of feel like one story, and he cut it. Up, you know, like I couldn't really differentiate one from the other. It's like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, So the Thrawn trilogy is my number two. My number two is the Dark Lord trilogy. That's oh. the Vader one, oh, where it's yeah. Vader, 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 Reg of the Sith is in the middle. Yeah, I love Vader. Moving on. Rob. <laughs> Uh, mine is Dark Lord: The Rise of Dor- Darth Damn Vader it! as well. Oh, <laughs> so specifically that one, and th- the cool part about that one is that it's. It can be in some way almost treated as a prequel to Lords of the Sith yeah. in a certain way because it's literally uh, Vader just, you know, wrecking stuff. Like, in a similar yeah. way, it's similar to Dar- the Darth Maul one where it's, he's sent out on a mission by by uh, uh, by Palpatine, except this one is, it's take place like almost directly. I forget how long. It's like almost directly right after Revenge of the Sith. So he's still kind of coping towards, you know, having... Little to no limbs, and you know, just getting used to the entire thing. But he's still at the same time extremely, an extremely badass. Like you get this before it's before the times you get to see him do the crazy stuff that he does in Lords of the Sith, but to just a different extent. Yeah, Brock number two. Um, I'm gonna agree with Andrew and go Thrawn trilogy. Uh, now I'm trying to remember which is which. I know heir to the Empire is that 
the first book in the yeah. Thrawn trilogy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, for the that. record, mine was the Thrawn trilogy when I said Heir to the Empire. I just got the whole thing, Heir yeah. to the Empire. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, Heir to the Empire. Yeah, so like we get to introduce to Thrawn, who's this crazy cool character. We get introduced to Mar Jade, who then becomes a huge part of the expanding universe. Um, and it's just... It's... I don't think it's the first time, but it feels... It feel, is it one of the first trilogies that came out for the expanded universe? I feel like it was one yeah, of the yeah, earlier yeah, ones. Yeah, probably, so it was yeah. like it was first the one first came out in 91? Is that what was it? Yeah. Yeah, like so it was like the first time we're like, "Ooh, this is kind of like this could be a movie." I am sure like when it came out people were like, "We could this could be a this movie." This was the first this was the first resurgence that Star Wars had. Star Wars was a thing and then it kind of stopped being a thing and then this came back and made it a thing again and then it stopped being a thing. Yeah, and then shadows came out and it became a thing, and now it's it's pretty much state of things since then. And we get to see Bothans, or we get to read yeah. about Bothans, and then Leia goes in the first book goes to Kashyyyk, and you you find out that Wookies can kind of talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. All right, Rob, you're number one. Heir to the Empire. Oh, the Empire. <laughs> oh, la, la. Yeah, no, 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 no. leave it there. I think I think we said our, our everything. I, it's so cool that you get the instruction of Thrawn and Mara Jade in this book. And just get that Mary Jade and uh, Luke dynamic that you get throughout the uh, rest of the book series. So it's uh, it's pretty awesome. Andrew? Okay. <laughs> oh, great. Brock, can we go to you for number yeah. one? <laughs> I'm really nervous about Andrew's number one right now. <laughs> God, it's going to be one of those. Did the little it's going to be Star Wars and Yarn. You know from, those? From yeah. Wars? <laughs> or Daddy's Little Girls. And Vader. <laughs> anyway, Brock, number one. Uh, I want to piss you off and say... Uh, Shadows of the Empire because it surely is one of the best <laughs> expanding universe I think it's one of the things that hooked me on like you could read about this movie series you love yeah. but I will go the other way because we already know I think it's great uh, I'm going to go with the comic book series uh, I believe it was uh, Star Wars Republic where so this is after we get the prequels and we've learned we've met it's probably between um, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith so we get to see more of the Clone Wars before I think even before Clone Wars was a show, and this is also where we meet Quinlan Vos for the first time. I know now that might not be exactly accurate, but it's the first time I read of him, and I was like, "This is sweet." So, and they've put him in canon, like he's in some of the Clone Wars episode, like one at least, right? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. like, yeah, that was really cool, and it really, I think it was one of the first places where they expanded on what the world or the universe was like. Uh, outside of the movies. My number one is a Darth Maul Shadow Hunter or any freaking book with Darth Maul <laughs> in it. Uh, the Darth Maul comic came out on Wednesday. Brock, we picked it up. Yeah. We might do it. We held hands. <laughs> well, we held hands the whole time because I was so excited. Nah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Shadow Hunter, I really like Shadow I like reading all the, the Darth Maul uh, books. He's actually a very interesting character, a very unique. Uh, Have you read the comic? I yet? read the comic in 13 seconds. It's nice. very short. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I love the way they threw. We'll do a review on it, but I love the yeah. way they threw in rat tars. Yeah, <laughs> they're just like, hey, guess what? They exist, and other than that, and they look way better in the comic yeah. than they do in the movie. <laughs> uh, but that's my number one. Andrew, hit us with your number one, please. It was so hard to stay quiet earlier, but my number one is literally Med Star One and Two. <laughs> what? I swear to God. What? Tell me about this book. <laughs> what, what is it uh, like? <laughs> I'm so. I, I, I have see, never they, heard of this. It's real. It's it, they're they're the Clone Wars novels. They, they were like they, they came out with six of these that were called a Clone Wars novel, and this was a two parter. And basically, it was about it was basically Mash in Star Wars. It was this yeah. group of Alan Alda. Of uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it was just this group of people who worked on a medical facility that Med healed Star. clone troopers. Oh, Med Star. Star. And it was on this weird planet, and all they did was like injured clones got brought to them. And they healed them, and it was tucked away on some weird world so that the Separatists could never find them. But the whole plot of these two books were you're introduced to, I think, like eight or nine characters. And they're all cool characters. And then you find out, a th like a third of the way through the first book, one of them is a Separatist spy. But it doesn't say who. Like, they have, like, a code name. I think hmm. their code name is, like, Lens or something. So for these whole two books, you're like, who the hell is Lens? And you're getting so invested in what their story is. And a couple of Jedi, I think, like... um. The girl from Clone Wars who spoilers the the Jedi Ahsoka who, uh, who turns against them Ahsoka Ferris uh, <laughs> Ferris Afi oh okay she is in that book and her master Luminara they come and they visit and they try to figure out what's going on but basically you're just following these eight characters and like the whole time you're just okay there's one of these people is gonna turn on the other who the hell is it and it got really intense 
And I just remember getting emotionally invested in these books. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, now I want to read MedStar yeah, one and two. That that I don't want to read. I don't want to read three through six, but one and two, I definitely want to get my hands on. Steve Perry, thank you very much for entertaining us with everything. Also, everybody, thank you very much for uh, watching us, for subscribing to us, uh, for listening to us, and uh, making us a part of your day. It means a lot to us. It's fantastic. Uh, speaking of your day, we've taken up a much uh, too much time of your day right now, I'd say. Uh, we had fun talking about it. We hope you had fun listening to it. Brock? Yeah. That's our show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may the force be with all of you. Oh, wait. I'll wait for it. <laughs> take it. Take that camera. Always. See you guys. Bring up the audio of this. Stop recording. <laughs> Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.